Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to our September Training Tuesday event for OU Campus. Today's topic is building custom gadgets for OU Campus. During the presentation, all participants will be in a listen-only mode as this session is being recorded. If you have a question during the presentation, you may submit it online by clicking on the Q&A tab located on the right-hand side of your screen or from the drop-down menu above. Simply type your question into the dialog box at the bottom of the screen and send. Pr uh, please direct all questions to the panelists. The presenters will attempt to address your question during the presentation. After the formal presentation has ended, they will review and answer all remaining questions. Your presenters today are Ms. Lila Bronson, Omni Update Training Manager, with guest panelist Chul Kim, Senior Front End Web Developer, and Rich Paul, Technical Product Specialist. So, without ado, I'll pass the ball. Ms. Bronson, please take it away. All right, thank you, Andy. For today's presentation, I'm going to be going over how to build, manage, and install your own custom gadgets. And I have my very special guest to help me. We're going to uh, demonstrate a few of the basic principles and components needed for a gadget, as well as demonstrate a few gadgets of our own. Let me go ahead and get my PowerPoint up here. Right. But before I begin, I actually want to announce a very exciting thing going on right now at Omni Update. If you haven't heard about it, we have our 2014 Gadget Contest. And there's actually two ways to participate. You can submit a gadget idea, which doesn't require any coding, and that's due tomorrow uh, by 5 p.m. Or you can build and submit a working gadget by November 1st. If you win, you will get a trophy presented at our OUTC 15 conference. If you win the working gadget contest, you'll also receive a free conference registration and travel expenses reimbursed. If you're interested in that, we do have a link up on our main Omni Update page. We have details about the contest as well as information about how to submit the gadget idea or the working gadget. In addition to today's Training Tuesday, we have some additional resources available for you. If you're a member of our learning management system, you can actually register for our gadgets course. You do have to use a valid institution uh, uh, email address with a .edu and be an OmniUpdate customer. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in real quick here. You can sign in as a new user and register, or if you already have an LMS login, go ahead and log in with that to register. Once you're enrolled, we have self-paced modules, which will go over development and overview of what gadgets are. And very importantly, we have API calls documented for you so that you can build gadgets that actually interface and interact with OU Campus. Okay. If you're not familiar with what API calls are, we have a brief introduction as well as the list of the calls. In addition to that, we have some downloadable resources, a sample gadget, and the gadget library, uh, which Tool will explain a little more today. So our agenda today is a little bit about what is a gadget anyway. You may have an idea of what a gadget is, but I'm going to go ahead and define that in further detail. Also, uh, to give you guys a jump starter for that contest I was talking about, discuss a few of the potential applications for gadgets, how gadgets work, the components or ingredients of a working gadget, how you would host gadgets, including in OU Campus, and then how to install your gadgets in OU Campus in the setup area. After the PowerPoints, I'm going to turn it over to Chul and Rich, who are going to show you a few of their own gadgets, as well as some cool tools and features that you can use in your development. Any questions, save them till the end, and we'll have time for Q&A. So you might think of a gadget almost like an app on your phone. What gadgets are are tightly focused, self-contained web applications that add functionality to OU Campus. They're essentially a web page, or more specifically, a web app. If you've developed any other web apps, uh, you might be similar with this development process. They're generally written in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You can use additional uh, server-side or client-side codes depending on what functionality you want for the gadget. 
Gadgets can exist in the sidebar or before the dashboard, and they can help you with content creation, uh, managerial type activities. They can connect to OU Campus a API or third-party API clients. So a few potential gadget applications, not to name them all, but just a few here. Content creation utilities. This would be uh, like a lorem ipsum generator or a color picker to help with your page development. You can automate repetitive tasks like bulk assigning users to multiple groups uh, or doing a user import. And you can even integrate third-party API clients. If they use RESTful APIs and have the APIs documented, you can integrate those clients into OU Campus, some examples being YouTube or Flickr repositories. So you got the, the sense here that uh, APIs are a big part of gadgets. They're not the only way gadgets work, but gadgets have full access to the OU Campus uh, API calls. They can even interact with the main OU Campus application in limited ways. When you're building a gadget, it's actually going to be built out as that web app and loads inside of OU Campus within its own unique iframe. Again, it can be in the side panel, the sidebar gadgets, or for the dashboard, or both. Every gadget must have an HTTPS an HTTP or HTTPS URL that is accessible by the intended users, meaning it must be able to load in a browser by the users who want to access that gadget. A config.xml document that communicates certain instructions for how the gadget is going to operate to OU Campus. And then the actual HTML web page that's where you're going to build your web app with the source code and styling that you want for your gadget. Gadgets can be built inside of OU Campus or outside. It doesn't matter as long as it gets published to a server and has that valid HTTP uh, URL. If you're building it in OU Campus, you would build it in the staging server and could edit it like any other page. But you need to publish out the whole folder out to the production server, and it's the folder URL that's going to be used to install the gadget. Gadgets are hosted on web servers. In the case of building it in OU Campus, it would essentially be your production server that you're publishing out to. The gadget can live on any web server, though, uh, as long as you have uh, access to it and it's accessible by your users. The test for a gadget URL is to take the URL that you want to install in OU Campus and actually load it, load it in a browser tab. As long as you don't get an HTTP error, the URL is good and you can install it in OU Campus. To install a gadget, you're going to navigate to set up gadgets. And keep in mind that only level 10 users have access to the setup menu, so only they can install gadgets. Inside of setup gadgets, navigate and click on the new button. Paste or type your URL in the field. Hit fetch. Fetch is going to load that uh, URL for you. You want to just confirm that it loaded properly and you didn't get an error. And then you're going to hit Save, and the new gadget can be added uh, into OU Campus. After custom gadgets are installed, you can always go in and update, change settings, add access, or delete your own custom gadgets from that Setup Gadgets area. Again, only Level 10 administrators can set up and manage gadgets. Each gadget has an associated access group, and you can restrict access uh, to certain gadgets to particular groups of users. So you can group enable gadgets. By default, if no group is selected, only administrators will have access to those gadgets. When you hit edit, you'll get this screen where you can edit the gadget, and you have some different options available for what you can edit. You can edit the name, see the URL, types, so where the gadget is located. You can also set up the access groups that you want to have access to this gadget, change whether the gadget is always on, whether it's default on but users can turn it off, or whether it's default off, users can go in and actually add it themselves. If the gadget was set up with any configurable properties, they would show up down here and you can adjust the configurable, configurable properties. If you ever need to refresh the XML, the config.xml file, you can also do that in the same area uh, when you hover over instead of hit edit. 
To the right, there's an area where you can click refresh, and that will refresh your config file. So that was a little bit about building, installing, and managing your custom gadget. So I think I've done enough uh, talking, and it's going to be more interesting to actually see it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Rich Paul, who's going to show you a little bit about how you can find additional API calls and build out some uh, gadgets of your own. Thanks, Lila. Okay. All right. Uh, give me one second, Rich. It's uh, WebEx is having a little lag here, and I'm going to go ahead and make you the presenter. All right, Rich, it's all yours. Okay. I'm going to share my desktop. And Lila, let me know when you can see my screen. You're good to go, Rich. Okay, great. So one of the great things about OU Campus is that its functionality is exposed through these APIs, and you have full access to these APIs, and you can use it to create gadgets. So we've documented it pretty extensively here in our learning management system, but we're continually um, adding functionality and improving our API. So if you find yourself needing access to a, uh, an API call or a function in OU Campus and you can't find it in our documentation, before we get started, I just want to show you quickly how you can discover API calls yourself. So utilizing either the Chrome Dev Tools or maybe the Firebug add-on for Firefox, you can view the various API calls that OU Campus is making. So let me show you an example of that. So let's say we wanted to find out what API call is used to get the list of users. So just navigate to that page in OU Campus, and I'm using Chrome, so I'm going to go using F12, I'm going to go into the Dev Tools, select the Network tab here, and let's filter the list by just at XHR request. And then we just refresh the page. And you will see down here on the left side all of the API calls that OU Campus just made. So we get our list of auxiliary sites, our gadgets, and these URLs are pretty, pretty easily done. Follow the, the formatting is pretty easy to understand, so let's look for users. Ah, here we go. So click on the header tab, and you can see the request URL that was made. So you've got the URL, we've got our different query string parameters, and then if you click on response, you can see what was sent back. Now the way our gadgets work is you do an HTTP request and JSON data is returned. Um, and you've got the JSON data here, so you can see, oh, we get back first name, last saved, etc. Now this may not always be very readable, so I'm going to copy this data. And we've got a utility that we've linked in our API documentation that's a JSON viewer. I find it a little bit easier to read and view. So let's open that up, and let's just paste that JSON data into the viewer. Click on Viewer, and here we have a list of the various objects that were returned, and these are our users. So now you can see, okay, I've got first name, last name, username, all the data that's returned from our users that I'll be able to take advantage of and, and access and use in my gadget. All right, let's build an actual gadget or show you one that I've built. So I'm in OU Campus. We just go in, we've got a gadgets folder, and I'm going to go into my user list folder. Now what I'm going to create is I wanted to create a gadget that displayed all my OU Campus users and gave me a shortcut link to their setup page. So I'll show you an example of what it looks like. The end result is a list of my users, and each one is hyperlinked to their setup page. So let me show you how I built that. Every gadget requires two files. There's the config.xml for your configuration, and then the index page. So let's take a look at the, uh, the config.xml. This is just a basic file. There's more entries that could go in here, but I've got the type, you know, Lila mentioned that we could have a sidebar gadget or a dashboard gadget. This is going to be a sidebar gadget. Now we've got the title, its icon, and its initial height. So now let's look at the index page. You know, and as Lila mentioned, these are web apps. It's basically an HTML page with some code in it. So we're going to set up our HTML page. We've got the title. We've got some styling. Now gadgets require jQuery. So we're going to load up the jQuery library and our gadget library. And you, there's access to this out on the learning management system. 
Now, when you create a new instance of the gadget, you get the following properties available to you. So we've got our API host, and that's the starting point of all API calls. And your token, you always have to authenticate, and some other things like account and users and the host base. So utilizing these properties, we can set up our API endpoints and make calls so that we can you know, process and digest the data. So this is my user list gadget. So let me go through it for you. First, we set up our, a new instance of gadget. So then all these properties are now available to me. And I'm going to create a function called fetch users. First thing we're going to do is we need to get the list of users. So if I look in the API documentation, let's look for users. You can see some of the user functions. Don't want to do this one. All right, so I'm going to list the users. So we go to slash user slash list. It's a get request, and we need these two parameters, account and admin. So let's go build up that URL. First thing we do is we use the get method on the API host property so that we can get our starting point for our URL. And then we append slash users slash list. We're going to have to pass in some parameters, so let's um, create that object here. We've got always have to bring in the authorization token. You can use the get method again on the token property. And then we're going to pass in the two parameters that our API doc said we needed. That was account and admin. Account you can get from the account property. And admin I'm just going to leave false for right now. The next thing that I want my uh, gadget to do is I want it to link to their setup page. So I need to build up that URL. Now let's, how would we figure out what that URL is? Well, pretty easy. All we have to do is just navigate to where we want to, you know, the function we want, which is users. I'm going to click on Andy. So now you can see this is the URL we're going to need to link to. This is what the API host that I've been talking about. This is what we call the host base. And then I'm going to need to append slash setup slash users and that particular user's name. That'll get us to their setup page. So here I'm setting up that URL. I'm going to get the API host. I'm going to get the host base, and then I'm going to append slash setup slash users. So that's the beginning of our setup user link. All right, so now we're ready to make our HTTP request. So we do a git JSON on the, with the user list URL. We'll pass in our parameters, and then on the data that's returned, we're going to loop over that data, which is each of our users. So for each user that we want to display, we first want their display name. So we're going to take first name, a space, and last name. Then we need their particular username so that we can link to their setup page. So that's the username. All right, now we're ready to start appending this data to our main div, which is in the body of our page. So we're going to use the append method to add a list item that is a hyperlink to their setup page. Inside that link is their image and their display name. We're going to do that for each user, and then we're going to call this function. So that's it. So let's see if the result is our list of users with their picture, their link, their name, and it's hyperlinked to their setup page. There you go. So that's a, this is a simple example, but I'm, it, I hope it shows you how you can use gadgets to streamline the various tasks for workflow and for different things that you need to do within OU Campus. So thank you for your time, and I am going to now pass the ball on over to Chul Kim, our senior front-end web developer, and he's going to show you some more examples of gadgets. Okay. And Chul, it's all yours. Hi, everyone. This is Chul here. Um, so just to build on what Rich was saying, I just want to show you a few more things you can do using our, our um, gadget library. I have it open here. Well, actually, I'm not sure if I'm sh uh, sharing my screen at this point I'm not, or not. You're not yes, sharing your share uh, screen yet, Chul. Sure. Yeah, how do I do that? <laughs> Let's see. Be from the menu, drop down menu at the top where you can select that is a share menu at the top. Share my desktop, share. okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Can you see, see my desktop now? Yes. Okay, great. We see your sublime text. Yeah. Great, great. So I have uh, the gadgetlib.js file open in, in, this, in this code editor, just to show you a couple of things that you can use in here. Now, Rich already showed you how you can directly address the or you can the API using AJAX calls within the gadget. Um, so that was a good intro. And it, he also showed you how you can um, actually interact with the OU Campus front end, that is the user interface of OU Campus, um, for example, by setting the location of OU Campus, as he showed you when he clicked on the username on his gadget, it opened the uh, user setup page. Um, so I'm going to show you something a couple of other things that are similar to that in terms of interacting with the OU Campus front end or user interface, I should say. Uh, so in the uh, gadget lib, in the gadget uh, class, we see a couple of methods here. Um, the first one I want to show you is um, OUC insert add cursor. What this method will do is uh, you handed some content, um, generally text or HTML content. And it's going to uh, insert that content wherever the cursor is um, in the WYSIWYG editor or the source editor, whichever one is actually uh, um, um, active in your campus. Um, please note that it, it will only insert content into those two locations, the WYSIWYG editor or the source editor, not into, say, a, uh, a text field in, in, a, in a setup form, something like that. And let's see if I hope that I can demonstrate the use of this real quickly. Here I am. I'm going to go ahead and I happen to have the, the gadget lib open in this source editor also, but I'm just going to create a new blank line at the bottom of this and then go into the, uh, the JavaScript console for one of the gadgets. Let's say I go into here. So I'll right click on the gadget, click inspect element. Now that's going to that make everything really squished on the left. So I'm going to put, move this to the bottom of the window. Okay, that's a little better. And I just want to just demonstrate <clears throat> how we can use that 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 method. Now I believe I should have. Okay, I do not. I do not actually have an instance of the gadget class in this. Oh, okay, wait a minute. I'm not. I'm not actually in the right uh, uh, context in the uh, in the uh, console. So I need to select a context here in the frame menu. So I want to select a quick message context. Now I do have an instance of the gadget object. Um, so I can simply do gadget. Dot. Let me see if I remember the, the name of the method here. So you see insert that cursor. Now let's make sure that I have the cursor here somewhere where we can see it. Now if I type in just something, something like hello there, it will insert the content into the location of the cursor. So you can use that, as I said before, you can use that in the source editor or in the WYSIWYG editor. Uh, in the WYSIWYG, you can additionally insert HTML, and the WYSIWYG editor will parse the HTML and display it correctly inside the, the editor. The other method I, want, I wanted to, use to show you was the get current location method, or you see get current location. Now, this does the opposite of the, the method that Rich used in his gadget to set the current location. This is just going to re return an object which contains, contains some information about the current location. So if I run this in the console, I'll get this object here. Ah, right. Now, the reason why I didn't return the object that I was expecting is because this is an asynchronous method. So I can't just, the return value is not going to be the, the data that I want. I actually have to, um, I have to use a, um, a jQuery deferred uh, done method or perhaps a then method to uh, process the return data when, when the uh, method actually returns the data that I want. So 
So I'll go ahead and use a, a then method here. So hopefully the data will be in this parameter. Now I can just type that directly to the console so we can see what we got. Okay, here we go. So this is actually the, the object that I was expecting to get from that method. So I have some different properties, related, all related to the current location in OU campus. There's the host name, um, there's the href, the origin, the path name, protocol, and all that good stuff. So you could use this, for example, this information to, to craft a location URL that you could then use the set, um, the set current location uh, uh, method to uh, change the location in OU campus. Actually, though, the set, the set current location method doesn't actually require a full URL. All it, all it requires is a root. And when we say root, what we mean is just the part of the URL which follows the site name. So if you look at an OU campus URL, just to give you a brief overview, it starts with the, uh, the name of the server, in this case, CMS, a.cms. Uh, then 10, which refers to the root of the, of the main UI, as opposed to the super admin UI, which starts with admin. Then following that, we have a hash mark and then the skin name, in this case, test drives, followed by the account name, well, a slash and then the account name, followed by another slash and the site name, and finally, what we refer to as the root. Um, this basically gives your location in the app. So you notice if I change this to, let's say, browse staging, it should take me to the, well, after I uh, say okay to lose the changes, it'll take me to the staging uh, file list. Um, so it's up to you whether you use this method, or you see set current location, or you want to build your own URL using the, the data that I just showed you. Uh, down here, uh, which we got from the get current location method, and then uh, crafting the URL and, and setting the window location directly to the URL that you that you create. Okay, so that's those that does it for the special methods in GadgetLib that I wanted to show you. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about is um, um, the concept of of notifications. Um, and how gadgets can receive and act upon notifications. Uh, notifications are pretty are pretty pervasive throughout OU campus. Um, for example, if I if I rename a file, let's say I rename something that hopefully won't break anything if I rename. Uh, uh, here's a better idea. Let's say I copy this file. Well, copy it to the same folder. It'll give it a new file name. When the copy is successful, the OU Campus backend sends a notification to the user interface, notifying the, new, the user that the copy was successful. So there are notifications for things like copy, remove, rename, delete, um, things like when a publish is finished, especially when a multi-publish uh, operation is finished. It's very useful to be notified when it's finished. Um, and gadgets can actually tap into these notifications for whatever reason. And the way you can do that is um, in the gadgets config.xml file. Here's, let's see, I'll just show you an example of one that has a notification uh, register, registration already in, in it. Right. So you have a special entry in your config.xml file uh, with the key notifications. And the value of this entry, the content of the entry, should be set to, should be a list of the types of notifications that you want to listen to or uh, be notified of. So in this example, I, I, I originally had um, just message in there. Now I can, I can add more notifications by putting, um, uh, adding them uh, with comma separating them. So in this case, uh, my gadget will be notified whenever there is a notification for a message, a publish event, or a save event uh, from the back end. 
So, and then in the, the JavaScript of your gadget, let's see how we use that notification. Ah, uh, I shouldn't use that one. That one is the empty uh, version of the chat demo gadget that, that I used in the OUC 14 training, uh, OUTC 14 training. Uh, I've got to find a, a version of that gadget that actually has the code in it. Um, Let me try, try and find that. Okay, this one's got it. So this is how we use a notification that a gadget is, that is passed on to a gadget. Um, if you have a, um, if you set up some some list some event listeners on the gadget object, which I've done here, um, you can listen for the notification event, which uh, the OE Campus front end will pass on to the gadget. And so we can set up a a listener for different types of notifications, such as message, which I've done here, and when the notification, the message notification is passed on to the gadget, the gadget can then uh, be aware of that notification and act on it however it sees fit. And here, uh, what I've done is I take the uh, message, message notification, I extract the data from it, um, and then I display the message in the gadget window, essentially. So I think since time is limited, I think that uh, I'll stop there. And I'm sure you have questions, and I'll be happy to answer them in the Q&A period of, the, of our training today. Um, so uh, with that, I think I'll pass it back to Lila. All right. Thank you, Chul. I'm glad you were explaining the JavaScript and uh, not me. I feel like you're uh, better adept at that. But I'm going to go ahead and show you a little bit about after gadgets are created and developed, how you can manage them in OU Campus. So I'm going to uh, steal the presenter back from you, Chul, here. OK, great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not letting me. Let me see if I can terminate it myself. Uh, did that oh, work? OK. So after gadgets are developed and created, and hopefully you got a sense that uh, using some common web development techniques that you guys know, using jQuery and some of the API documentations in our gadget library, you can build out some pretty impressive gadgets. So after everything is, is built out and you've developed these amazing gadgets, let me show you a little bit about how to install them and how to manage your settings. So let me pull back up here. All right. And Tools and Rich's gadgets are already installed, so I'm actually going to use a separate one here, one that another developer created, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, borrow for the purpose of this training. And it's, an, it's a Yahoo Weather app. So I have the URL. The URL, remember, has to be uh, loadable in a browser. So just to show you how that works, notice I can load this. So as long as it loads and it's a valid URL, uh, I can use it as a gadget in OU Campus. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the new button here. Hit fetch. And then it brings me to the screen where I can configure my gadget. So the name by default is going to be whatever name is in the config file. If you want to, you can override that, that name. You'll be able to see the URL and the types. Again, types are controlled by whatever's uh, set up in your config XML. So you can have dashboard, sidebar, or both. By default, access for custom gadgets is just set to administrators only. If you want to, you can set a specific group of users, or you can always define it as everyone, which is the default group for all your users in the account. I can change the display options for uh, where it's going to show up on the side in the dashboard. Do I want to have it always on? Do I want to have it by default on, but my users can go up, you know, up to their settings and turn it off? 
or they want it to be default off, and then they can go on and turn it on if they want. So I'm just going to leave it default on. This particular gadget doesn't have configurable properties, but if it did, uh, set up in the config file, I could change some of those here. So I'm going to go ahead and save this new gadget. It's added to the list. If I ever need to, I can go ahead and hit edit. I can change access for this gadget. If I make changes to the config.xml file, I would need to come here and refresh uh, the connection to that config file. And then I can delete custom gadgets. Please note that you cannot delete system gadgets identified here by this OU, uh, but you can delete custom gadgets. After a gadget is set up, It'll be immediately available if you have it at that default on inside here. This particular gadget shows up uh, in the sidebar as well as on my dashboard. So I'll go ahead and close that out so you can see a uh, kind of nice, pretty uh, Yahoo weather app here. This is using a third-party API. So I wanted to bring this up here just to give you an idea of a pretty simple third-party API we're using. You can integrate it with a weather client, and you can uh, see how beautiful our weather in Camarillo is today with this Yahoo Weather app. If I wanted to turn it off, I could go ahead and always uh, uncheck that, and that's going to turn it off on the dashboard. And then up here in the gadgets, I also have the ability to turn it on or off. All right. So between the combination of OU Campus APIs, uh, your own web apps that you build out and third-party API clients, hopefully you get the sense that the possibilities are really endless. And that's what we wanted to impart on you today, is that with your creativity and with these resources, the LMS, the API calls, and the web, you know, the web developer tools in Chrome, Firefox, additional browsers, you can really put together great gadgets that customize OU Campus in every way you want. In training, a lot of times people come up to me or, you know, talk to me and, and say, I wish OU Campus did this. Well, you have the tools, you have the power, you can build it. So I'm going to go ahead and with that final statement, open this up to Q&A. All right. And feel free for question and answers. You have Rich, Chul, myself, and Andy. You can direct a question to the panel or ask someone uh, in particular if you want to know, you know something from our dev, dev specialists here. I have a question for you, Chul. Chul, how are you getting around the same origin policy? Is API call going back to CMS.OmniUpdate? Then is it updating the main window? And that's from Daniel Chase. How are we getting around the same origin policy? Well, we've, we've enabled um, uh, cores, cross-origin resource sharing, on the API server um, so that, you know, no matter what your, where your app is loaded from, your gadget, rather, uh, you can access the API uh, above your campus. Okay. We'll give people time uh, to generate your questions. I have one from Candice Zhu. For the drag and drop functionality, like your image gadgets have, is there a specific API call from OU Campus? Drag and drop uh, from a uh, external gadget, that is a non-system gadget, is actually not supported because, uh, and that's not a limitation of OU Campus or of gadgets, but rather of the browser. <clears throat> For security reasons, browsers do not allow um, dragging and dropping content from one frame uh, at a different um, domain or host uh, into another frame at a, at a different domain or host. Uh, the, gadget, the browser won't allow it. You can, you can try it, but it won't work because of the, that security, security restriction. The reason why it works with our system gadget, the, uh, the images gadget, and the snippets gadget is because they're actually living on the same host, um, which is the OUC uh, uh, app server. Uh, so unfortunately, that port facility isn't available for external gadgets or third-party gadgets, but you can always use the OUC insert a cursor method from the gadgetlib.js to do more or less the same thing. Okay. 
Any other additional questions? Feel free to add them to the chat right now. In case anyone's formulating their questions, we'll go ahead and wait a few minutes. All right. Well, if you guys don't have any questions, hopefully that means we were able to answer some of the questions and question uh, provide you with the resources you needed. Lila, there's a question from John Tyler. How do you get access to the LMS? Oh, that's a great question. So. In order to uh, register for the LMS, you're going to want to go to lms.omniupdate.com, and we have a general registration for some of our uh, public courses. The Gadgets and API course you need to register separately, and I'll go ahead and pull back up here. My Chrome. If you go to that page, Sorry about that. If you go to that uh, page on our site that's talking about the gadget contest, and let me see if I can, uh, I have it over here. Let me grab that link real quick. So if you're interested in the gadget an API course from the main URL for the gadget contest campaign slash gadget challenge slash 2014 you can go ahead and hit register you can also just register generally for the learning management system with the lms.omniupdate.com login if you need help registering you can always contact either support at omniupdate.com or training at omniupdate.com. Both will uh, generate a, a ticket in our help desk and we'll send you the, the link to register. If you forget the campaign's URL uh, and you want that, you, uh, that gadgets course in particular, just specify that in the ticket and we'll give you the correct link for that one. Is there a list of gadgets written by OU available? Um, I don't know if Chul wanted to speak on that. In general, the gadgets that are publicly available are already included, and they're what we consider system-level gadgets, so those are designated with the OU logo. As we build out custom gadgets, I believe uh, we will make some additional ones available. Additional gadgets will also be released uh, with updates. But Chul or Andrew or Andy, do you want to add anything to that? No, I think that that's basically correct. As as we build more gadgets, <clears throat> they will be added to the system level, and then uh, administrators would be able to enable them or hide them or control who has access to them um, based on their needs. Um, there are longer term plans um, for uh, being able to have a, a gadget repository an app store, as it were, um, but that's uh, longer-term plans um, that I don't have any more details on that yet. Okay, so Brendan Sparks posted uh, a comment, not so much a question, but a comment, <laughs> He wants to remind all of you who are listening to hang out in the OCN more, share your code ideas, and uh, become more active, especially in gadget development. You guys can kind of brainstorm together. Maybe not so much for the contest, if you're trying to win the contest, but just generally you can go in there and share your great gadget ideas in the future. Uh, I'd like, also like to add, um, if uh, anybody, you know, uh, realizes that there is some uh, functionality that they would like to have in OU Campus uh, that would make their gadget, um, you know, more powerful or, or enhance it in some other way uh, that's not in OU Campus, uh, please 
uh, feel free to uh, write a suggestion in our uh, feedback forum or the feedback page that we have. Um, and uh, we, because we'd love to hear those suggestions and how we can make uh, your life uh, better or easier as a as a gadget developer, how you can tie in better to your campus, either the back end or the, the user interface. Okay. Last call for questions. Wait, let me see here. I think that this is a troubleshooting question and probably geared towards either Rich or Chul, but uh, Daniel Chase says, this was my real problem. I tried using the Flickr Picker code from OUTC14, and I see that the API has been updated to require the authentication token. Okay, so that was not a question. He was more just saying thank you to you, Chul. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> and uh, there's a comment from Daniel Larkin's get currently selected text. Is Oh, that's a uh, suggestion for a um, another... Um, Integration functionality we could add. Yeah, that's that's actually a good idea. Uh, yeah, we, we will um, consider that and you know perhaps uh, add that to a future release of your campus. Okay. All right. Well, if there aren't any additional questions, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up here. Uh, it's very hard to, to talk about anything development or developer related in 40 minutes. So I just wanted to remind you guys that this is just the jumping off point. Please use the resources available in the LMS, uh, your own dev tools. Feel free to uh, contact support if you guys are having uh, any issues, and we're happy to help you. So we're excited to see what you come up with with your own custom gadgets, and thank you very much for joining us on today's Training Tuesday. Thanks, everyone. Our next training Tuesday will be held October 28th. Um, be sure to visit the OCN, uh, the LMS, for further details. And, of course, we will send out and post information on the support site as well.